Welcome to Dakota Starry Nights. In this episode, we're going to take a look at an issue that I had in Right Ascension with the Celestron C Gem mount. Now, right here, as you can see, this is the Celestron C Gem mount. And this happened occasionally in Right Ascension. Not all the time, but as time went on, it started to happen a little bit more. And the last time it happened, uh, it became a real issue because I was trying to image the uh, conjunction of Jupiter and Venus that we had a couple of weeks back. And so at that point I decided I needed to take a real good look at this. When the mount would uh, slew or track, because it seemed to slew okay, when the mount would track and get to be about this position right here, it would freeze up in right ascension. It wouldn't go anymore. And trying to get the hand controller uh, to make it go up like that, you could, it wouldn't move. It would just lock up. Uh, it was fine going with the counterweights uh, west of the meridian, but when the counterweights were east of the meridian, in my case, it would lock up. Now, this didn't happen all the time, but it seemed to happen when I needed the mount the most, as you could probably relate to that kind of situation. So what I did was I took out the control module or the motor control module. Now here is the motor control module as you can see and this is what you normally see when you look at the C-Gem from the outside right there. That's normally what you look at. Uh, this is really a simple process so let's take a look at it a little closer. Okay so what we have here are four screws I'm only showing two of them here but they're one in each corner and let's take a look at the plate you could see there's one in each corner one here one here one down here and one down here now these screws in the middle you don't undo these all you need to do is the ones on the outside of the perimeter that will enable you to access the motor control board First off, if you don't feel comfortable about doing this kind of thing, then I suggest you just take the mount in uh, to Celestron and have them take a look at it. Uh, and the other thing I would suggest, if your mount is still under warranty, I would definitely have Celestron look at it. Because once you split the case like this, you're probably going to void your warranty. Okay, that said, this is the right ascension motor right here. And there are uh, essentially two cables to it. There's this one here and this yellow one here. Now, you'll see these connected to the motor control board. Pretty basic and straightforward looking at it. One thing I'd like to point out, though, is this is housed or mounted onto this plate. And that is screwed into your uh, equatorial head here with these Allen head uh, screws. Now, what I did was, in order to maintain the adjustment, because this is adjustable, this one will adjust it going up and down that way, and this one, let's see, adjusts it the same way, up and down that way, I believe. And that will allow you to engage the gears on the other side of the mount. This is your worm gear right here. If you remove this screw, you'll see the gears mesh up. Right here is your gear. There's two gears here. One is a driving your worm gear up here and the other one is coming off your right ascension or in this case I believe that's the declination but they're both the same as far as the way this works there's an adjustment there and you don't want it too sloppy you don't want it too tight to where it's German but you want a nice clean fit if they uh, mounted the right ascension and declination motors uh, to your worms uh, gears properly then you'll see a nice uh, fit, uh, uh, kind of a little snug, but not too snug. So what I did was, uh, before I uh, broke this down, if you look, you could see I took a Sharpie pen or magic mark and I put a little dot right there. This is for, let's see, that would be the declination. And I put another one over here on the right ascension. And I did the same thing for up on this side and on the other side. So those dots are centered to the Allen head screw. And that way uh, you know where your adjustment was before you pull these out. Because you're going to need to pull these out in order to make this check if you're having the difficulty uh, in right ascension that I had. It appeared to be that it was probably the encoders on the motor control board. Okay, on this cable here, these are identical for the right ascension and the declination from what I was able to ascertain, they're identical. There's a motor right here, this is the motor, and then here's a gear housing right here. 
Okay, so I took the right ascension motor out of the mount, still connected to the control board, and making sure that I wasn't touching anything, uh, you know, so where nothing would arc over, I went ahead and plugged it into my battery pack, a 12 volt battery pack, and turned it on, holding the motor with just two fingers. And I could feel that the motor was stuttering a little bit, like that. It was doing this, just, just a little stuttering. And it was intermittent, but it kept doing it. So then I unplugged uh, the motor from the motor control board. There are two wires that come off this cable here. One leads to one side of this uh, right ascension motor, and the other leads to the other side. And you need to trace them out to see where they are. In, in relationship to these pinholes. And they're either going to be uh, to the extreme left or the extreme right. And uh, in this case, they were on my, uh, let's see, they were on the right, but you're going to have to check yours. And what I did was I took some, uh, this is phone cable wire. It's pretty small stuff. I don't know if you could see it. And I stripped a little bit out. See that right there? I stripped a little bit out and then I, now this is with the right ascension motor. Uh, disconnected from the mount and from the motor control board and there's no power to the mount at this point. And then I plugged one in one end and one in the other end and it, it and for the both leads. Now it doesn't matter which lead it is because this is DC power. This thing goes either left, this turns left or right depending upon the uh, polarity of the power being supplied. The only thing you need to double, triple make sure is that your leads that you're plugging this into are the right leads on the outside here. You'll see these uh, leads. This one has, it has like a black sleeve on it and on the other side it's the same way. Okay, and then you want to make sure when you strip these wires that they're not touching each other, that you've only got enough copper exposed to where that once they go inside that little uh, hole there that they are not exposed because you don't want these arcing across each other. Take this other end and connect it to my battery and then turn the battery on and then held the motor and when I did that the motor ran smooth. It was no stutter whatsoever. So that was indicating to me that there was something wrong with the motor control board. It seemed that possibly the encoders were corrupted or or damaged or something else. And then to take it a step further to make sure a buddy of mine, he has a C-Gem mount too. And so what, so what we did was we took the right ascension motor and connected it to his C-Gem mount into the motor control board, turned the power on and it ran smooth. So that was definitive proof that there was something wrong with the motor control board. Uh, but in this case, if I would have went ahead and bought the uh, right ascension motor, I still would have had the problem because it was really in the motor control board. The other thing I'd like to mention um, is that these nuts here, these Allen screws, they have a uh, Loctite and it's the kind that's removable. It's not the permanent Loctite. And you'll need to put a little bit of that back on whenever you put it back in. The problem was really irritating and uh, it, I had, was scratching my head there for quite some time. I do have a Los Mandy mount so I was using that most of the time but occasionally I like to take the C-Gem out for some visual work or for some light wide field astrophotography. It's a great mount, it's really portable and light and I love the all-star polar alignment uh, routine that it offers. So anyway guys, I hope this uh, uh, maybe uh, could solve a problem that you have. It's a nice definitive test. Again, uh, you do this at your own risk. Uh, I'm not guaranteeing nothing here, but uh, if you're somewhat apt at, ele at electronics and tinkering and taking things apart, you shouldn't have that much uh, difficulty doing this. It's a pretty straightforward test. One other modification you might want to consider putting this all back. As you notice what I've done here, I've put one of these, it's a wire holder, it's plastic. What this does, as you probably have encountered, you're always pulling on this cable and it's coiled and boy I wish they would make a flat cable. Uh, are you listening Celestron? <laughs> and uh, So you're always pulling on that and then that's always interfering uh, with this uh, hand controller import and your power too. You're always jerking on that. 
And so what I've done is uh, the last screw I've gotten, um, I forget what millimeter size it is, but I got a little longer one with a nice uh, little washer. And again, uh, you want to make this, you want to get this, it's uh, plastic. Uh, you can get them at a hardware store as far as the, uh, as far as that goes. And then put that right in there. And as you uh, cinch that down, that's going to keep you from pulling your uh, cables all the time at, at the connector. I've got it to where um, this will keep me from pulling on that cable and uh, it really works pretty sweet. It's an easy fix. Make sure that that's plastic because if it's metal and you're pulling on it you could cut into the cable. Uh, and the big washer what that does is it displaces the pressure across the entire face of the plastic so you don't actually tear it. And now when you pull on your cable you see you, I'm pulling on it but I'm not inter interfering with this in the same way with the power cable. It's a little deal, less than a buck, but I'll tell you what, it makes a nice little improvement to that. Anyway, clear skies and thanks for watching Dakota Starry Nights.